Right, so in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how you can take a lawn that looks a little bit like this and turn it into something that looks like this. Now, just a bit of a disclaimer before we get into today's video. This video will not show you how to get the perfect lawn, but what it will do is it'll show you how you can take a lawn that's in a state like this is in now where there are lots of weeds, there's lots of moss knocking about, and how you can actually transform it into a lawn that looks half decent. I won't be eradicating all the weeds, I won't be getting rid of all the problems with this lawn, but I will be improving it massively. So, I started off by actually measuring the space just to get a rough idea of the square footage that I was actually working with. You've got to start by doing this because when you put products down onto the lawn, you don't want to be putting down too much or too little, and that's the same when it comes to putting seed down too. So I started off by putting some liquid iron down onto the lawn. Now the reason I started with liquid iron is it can do two things to your lawn. The first one is it can green up your grass without giving it an accelerated boost of growth, and it can also kill moss too. You can see that the lawn that I'm working with is just completely riddled with moss, and all this is gonna do is suffocate any of those grass plants that are trying to grow through. So if I was to apply a fertilizer to this lawn in the state that it's in now, as much as it would promote the actual growth of the grass plants, they won't be able to thrive as well or thicken up as much as they would do because of that moss that's suffocating them. As well as putting liquid iron in the knapsack sprayer, I'm also putting in a wetting agent as well. And all this is gonna do is it's gonna help to break the water tension of each of the water molecules. So once it actually rains onto the lawn, it's gonna help it to retain that moisture and retain the liquid iron product. Once you do apply a product like liquid iron, you do need to be giving your lawn around about one or two weeks just to allow that moss to blacken. So you may not see immediate results for the first couple of days, but then once a week has gone by, you'll notice that the moss starts to turn black and that's how you know you've actually killed the moss and it's time to remove it using a scarifier. So about two weeks later, this is what the lawn looked like. So you can visibly see now that the grass blades look a little bit darker, but also there's lots of, you know, that black moss knocking about on the lawn because it has been killed by the liquid iron. I gave it a quick cut before I got on with the scarifier just to take off that top layer of growth, which meant that when I did get on with the scarifier, I didn't have to almost rip through lots of the long grass blades. gave it a second cut on the lowest setting on the Bosch just to scalp the grass and all that means is that you're taking that grass plant down as low as possible so that when you do get on the scarifier you can actually rip out the thatch and the dead moss much more easily. Now you can rake out the moss by hand and all the thatch too but it's much easier if you do have an electric scarifier. You can pick them up for around about 70 to 100 pound and you can just see now how much thatch and dead moss is actually coming off the lawn. Now, this lawn has never been scarified, not for the last 20 years anyway. And you can see that as I go on with the scarifier, I eventually take off the collection bag at the back because it was just completely pointless having to empty it every few passes. The amount of dead moss and thatch that came out was unbelievable. So if you've never scarified your lawn before, you know, it is quite an eye-opening experience to realize how much dead matter is actually sitting on top of that soil layer. You do know if your grass does need to be scarified because often it can feel quite bouncy or spongy on your feet. And once you have scarified, it feels a little bit firmer because it's actually the soil layer you're almost standing on instead. A leaf rake is a really great way just to actually rake up all of that thatch and dead moss. If you use a spring time rake, it's just gonna pass through the tines and be a bit of a nightmare to do. And this is just half of the problem, which is actually, you know, preventing those grass plants from growing in a really healthy way. So you can see this is full of weeds, it's full of moss, it's full of thatch. And even on this second pass now, an equal amount of thatch is coming off. So I have actually dropped the scarifier to a lower setting this time round, just to deep a little bit deeper into that soil layer to rip out even more of that thatch just to make sure that when I put new seed down, it gives it the best chance because it actually can come into contact with the soil below. You can see that from the third pass now, the scarifier is really digging into that soil layer. And if you're doing a full renovation, particularly for the first time, you wanna be this harsh with the lawn because you almost wanna take it back to square one. So 
So after scarifying, I decided to aerate the lawn. Now I wasn't using any like hollow tine aeration methods where you actually pull cores out of the lawn. All I was doing was digging the garden fork into the ground and I was pressing down just to lift up the soil ever so slightly just to loosen it to allow water and some of the products to get deeper down into the soil layer. So it wasn't about actually removing any content from the lawn, it's more about loosening the existing soil. Now what I did decide to do was put a few bags of topsoil just over the existing soil. Now the aim of this isn't to necessarily improve the actual soil that's already there because I'm only putting a thin layer down and it's not really to level it. The main aim of putting this down was to have a nice loose layer of soil for the actual seed to be able to germinate well into. And some may say that this isn't really necessary and you don't have to do it, this is just, I guess, a bonus step. But if you do want to do it, it does give the seed a nice little space just to begin germinating. And at this point, I would like to mention that you can see the edge of the lawn that's, you know, on the left-hand side of the screen now. I didn't really do much with it. The strimmer was dead at the time, so I couldn't exactly go on and strim it. Um, and it is something which, you know, I am going to be dealing with later down the line. It's not a massive deal. There's a few weeds there. There's a little bit of grass poking out. Honestly, it's not killing anyone. Like I said at the start, this video isn't about getting the perfect lawn, but it's about taking one that's in a bit of a naff position and just improving it and making it a half decent lawn. And all told, this project only took around about maybe two hours to complete, maybe an hour and a half, so not a massive amount of time. And you'll see with the results in the end, spending this little bit of time now on like a random Saturday, a random Sunday, can really pay off when it comes to actually improving the overall aesthetic of your lawn. The average lawn I see in the UK is completely riddled with weeds, it's overwhelmed with, you know, moss and thatch and all sorts. And at this time of year, when it gets into the summer, most lawns are looking yellow. So putting this little bit of work and now does not have to go a long way to making a massive difference. You might not have the best lawn in the world, but you might possibly have one of the best lawns on your streets. So the seed that I'm using today is the A1 Lawn Premiership Pro Grass Seed Mix. I've used this seed now for a couple of years and I would swear by it, it's superb. It goes a nice dark green, you get quite a thick grass blade and it's hard wearing too so if you've got a dog that goes onto it or if you're walking on it yourself from time to time it's not going to do too much damage and it'll be able to recover more easily. In terms of how much I put down onto the lawn, what I do is I put the Scott Spreader on the highest setting which is 18 and then I do about two or three passes until I see that the seed is quite evenly distributed. You don't want to put too much down where there's seeds almost on top of each other. You should be able to see the soil below and each seed has a tiny little space. Because you've got to remember, each of the seeds will become one grass plant, which will actually make up multiple grass blades. And I finished off just by top dressing with a little bit of topsoil. So I'm just rubbing it between my hands just to break the topsoil up. And it's only a thin layer just to prevent the birds from actually being able to get to it. Inevitably, birds are going to eat some of your seeds, but top dressing just makes that less likely to happen. I had to use a little bit of compost at the end because I did run out of topsoil, but you know, you could argue compost is actually a little bit better when it comes to top dressing. So the lawn just looked like a soil patch for a couple of weeks and then after four weeks, it improved and it looked like this. And you can just see there's a massive difference from the lawn it was to the lawn it is today. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not the best lawn in the world. It's not a golf green, nothing like that but it's so much better than the lawn it started as. It does still have quite a few weeds knocking about because it didn't put any weed killer down. I didn't actually remove any with a weed pulling tool, but the spaces where the moss used to be are all now filled with grass and that's made the lawn look so much better than what it started as. So like I said at the start, this you know isn't a renovation to get the best lawn ever or to get a weed free lawn or to you know get a bowling green lawn. But what it is about this video is taking a lawn that is in a bit of a sorry state and actually improving it. How can you take a lawn that looks a bit of a mess and turn it into one that looks half decent? So if you have enjoyed today's video or if you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you'd like to check out any of my other videos, such as my garden renovation series or any of my lawn tip videos, then head over to my channel. And if you like what you see, 
feel free to subscribe. And finally, thanks for watching.